Do you trust your bank? And should you trust Monzo or Starling? Now you might say you don't trust bankers at all or you're wary of the finance industry, but at the end of the day, most of us still get paid into our bank accounts and we trust that the money will stay there. So that's Lloyds, Barclays, HSBC, NatWest. But what about these new names that are springing up? Monzo, Starling Bank, and many others. Can you trust them too? And what are the risks of banking with a challenger bank? I'm gonna look at the complaints data, the setup of these banks, and give you my own experience of trying to answer these questions. So let's dive in. Hey guys, Oliver Smith here. If this is the first video you've seen of mine, make sure you hit like and subscribe below. It's totally free and you'll be notified of the videos I'm putting out on fintech and what it's like being a customer of brands like Monzo and Starling. My goal for 2022 is to get to 10,000 subscribers. So if you look at the number below, you'll see how close we are and you can make a difference just by clicking. Can you trust Monzo, Starling, the challenger banking world? Well, firstly, a question for you. What do you mean by trust? Do you mean, are they a bank that will treat you, the customer, fairly? Are they a nice bank? Or do you mean, is Monzo gonna vanish with all my money? Are they a safe bank? Well, I'll try and answer both. Now, we're lucky in the UK that the complaints data for nearly every financial services company is published by the regulator. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to take a look. So let's look at the complaints made during the first half of 2021. And I've sorted this list from largest to smallest number of complaints. And you can see that the most complained about financial business was Provident Personal Credit with nearly 11,000 complaints. I feel like that's a different video entirely. But next up, you have names that you might trust, like Barclays, Lloyds, HSBC, all with multiple thousands of complaints. Then, if you scroll down further, we have Monzo with 823 complaints and Starling with 368 complaints. Does that mean Barclays is treating its customers unfairly and Starling is great? Well, not necessarily. Barclays has upwards of 24 million customers in the UK, while Starling has just two and a half million. So you'd expect the volume of complaints to be a bit higher for Barclays. And it's not really a like for like comparison, as Barclays has a ton of customers who might have a Barclays mortgage, insurance, pension, but not a current account. But we can dig one level deeper into this complaint data because it also shows us how often a complaint is resolved in the customer's favor. So if you complain, how often do you get your way? Let's take a look at that. Again, I've sorted this list, but some interesting names appear near the top. Those most favorable to the customer, Klarna, Revolut, and then here we get to Monzo and Starling. Monzo upheld 41% of customer complaints in the first half of 2021 while Starling upheld 39%, meaning that just under half of your complaints are ruled in your favour. Now, if we scroll down a bit further, we have NatWest, 37%, HSBC, 36%, Santander at 30%, Barclays, 29%, TSB, 28%, Nationwide, 25%. And then way down there, we have Lloyds at just 20%. That means that Lloyds Bank, just one in five complaints are being upheld in the customer's favor. And that's not great, especially as Lloyd's are one of the most complained about banks during that period. So from the data, it would appear Monzo and Starling treat their customers pretty fairly, at least as fairly as most trustworthy banks. That's not to say that some people won't have bad experiences. You might have seen there were a host of news reports in 2020 about Monzo customers having their accounts frozen as part of anti-money laundering and fraud detection checks. Unfortunately, all banks are required to do this from time to time, and frustratingly, they're not able to explain to the customer why until the account has been fully vetted. I'm sure Barclays and HSBC freeze many times more accounts. However, that probably doesn't attract quite the same media headlines as when Monzo does it. So let's tackle the second part of trust. If this bank fails, is my money safe? And can I get it out? Well, quite simply, the answer is yes. Both Monzo and Starling are banks. They have banking licenses, granted by the Bank of England. This is unlike many other challenger banking brands in the UK, like Revolut or Moneys, 
which don't have banking licenses. In fact, I made a whole video about Revolut's banking license situation that you can watch if you're interested. In the UK, having a banking license means that deposits in customer accounts of up to £85,000 are protected by something called FSCS. Here's the logo. The Financial Services Compensation Scheme means if your money is in a bank that fails, the government will step in to give you your money back, normally within just a few days. And just to be 100% clear, both Monzo and Starling are covered by FSCS. So, is it likely that either bank would collapse? Well, here's where this video comes back to bite me in 10 years. But I don't think so or at least not in a way that would badly impact customers. When Northern Rock failed in 2008, it had around 4 million customers. It was taken over by the government and eventually became Virgin Money, and no customers lost money. And I think the story would be much the same if Monzo, Starling, or any licensed bank were to fail today. But I'd love to hear what you think. Do you trust these challenger banks with your life savings? Or do you remain cautious? Let me know down in the comments. And make sure you subscribe, because in my next video, I'm going hands-on with Revolut's 24 karat gold-plated card to see if it deserves a spot in your wallet. And you definitely don't want to miss that. I'll see you next time.